Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah means saved out Jehovah. It's almost like Joshua and Jesus, Jehovah saves. And the vision, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. So he goes through many reigns of kings. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. This is, everybody reads it. This is a warning to everybody. It's written primarily to Jerusalem and Judah, but pay attention, everybody. Including the heavens. Well, who's in the heavens? The devil and the principalities. Who's on the earth? Men and women. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished, given what is needed, and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. That's all the earth in reality, but Isaiah, I want to say Jeremiah. Well, how many times I'm going to say that through this book? It's Judah and Jerusalem, but the entire earth. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The ox knows his owner. I mean, that ox out there in the field, that's my that's my that's the one who owns me. That's the guy who takes care of me. And he asks his master's crib. The crib is where the animal sleeps, eats, is sheltered from storms, goes in at night. That ass will walk right up to his crib. The ox knows who owns him. But Israel, okay, verse 2 says, oh, heavens, the devils, oh, earth, everybody. But we're looking at the subject of Israel. Judah in Jerusalem. But Israel does not know. An ox may know its owner. Israel doesn't know. My people, Israel, not America, my people does not consider. You can almost spiritualize it. Israel, we know who that is. That's Israel. My people, the church. And we're going to see that double application throughout Isaiah of the children of Israel, Judah and Jerusalem, and we can make application to the church. Our nation of people, a sinful nation of people, that's Israel. God's not interested in any other nation but the nation of Israel as a group of people laden with iniquity. They're fully caring. Listen, that ass knows where his crib is. Israel is as an ass loaded with, with burdens. And Jesus said, you got burdens? I'll take your burdens. Come into my yoke. A seed of evildoers. The fathers are, are producing the evil that their children do and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren and their great-great-grandchildren. Until we get to the time of Jeremiah, then it's just wipe it out. And as you're reading verse 4, you also see England, and you see Germany, and you see America. You know why Germany had to fail? Because God said, as far as that Jew, I will curse them that curse you. And Germany cursed his people, murdered his people by the millions. They are corruptors. I have a note here, but I don't understand what my note is. Well, okay, they are corruptors. What about the church aid? What about Bible corruptions? 
What about Bibles, the modern Bibles that are in the market? There are there are schools of lessons properly should be, not in not in seminaries. Bible corruptions. I had to take Bible corruptions. And I had to learn the, the, the two trees, the, the live tree of the King James Bible and the dead tree of, of um, Westcott and Hort, Sinaiticus, and uh, Vaticanus. Corruption by corrupt men. They have forsaken the Lord, left the Lord. That's churches today. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel, not America. Listen, I serve the God of Israel. I don't serve the God of Rome. I don't serve the God of America. You know, and this has nothing to do with Christmas, but it does. You know, this we're going to be able to see the Christmas star. You mean Saturn and Jupiter? Duh! That's not a star. They're a planet. You don't know about Jupiter in the Bible? They have forsaken God for Christmas. That's all I'm going to say. Because Christmas has nowhere to do in the Bible. It has nothing to do with the Bible. And Easter. There is factual evidence of the paganism and churches hold to that paganism for what they like it or to congregate, whatever reason, but they won't stick to the truth. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel by forsaking the Lord for paganism. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it, it is called Asterisk. It is called Estar. The Catholic Church calls her Mary. has provoked the Holy One of Israel onto anger. They have gone away backwards, and our word is for his backsliding. Now, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 3. And this is going to be one of them books where we're not going to finish a whole chapter in one night. I'm to study the Bible. Every word. All right, we saw the nation of Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem, and we saw the application to the world and countries, not just America, and we also saw the application to the church. Let's see what uh, Isaiah chapter 1 to the church of Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, that's the church age we're in now, which means rights. I've got rights. Right, the word of God. These things saith the Amen, Jesus, the faithful Jesus, the true witness, Jesus, beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. Isn't that what God just said in Isaiah? I, I know I know everything about you. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would doubt that were cold or hot. Here's the only place in the Bible where God says, just be cold. Be a dead Christian. That's the only place. And I said, be on fire, be hot, but don't walk, Lord, don't walk down the middle the road. So thou, because thou art lukewarm, walking both sides of the street down the middle of the road, you're going to get hit by traffic. <clears throat> My mom used to tell me all the time, don't play in the middle of the road. Neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of the mouth, making me sick, throwing you up, puking. That's what God's almost practically saying in Isaiah chapter 1. You're making me sick. Because thou sayest I am rich, increased with goods, and have no need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched. Is that what Isaiah 1 saying? And miserable. That's what Isaiah chapter We're going to get that in a moment in Isaiah 1. And poor and blind and naked. So the very condition of lie the seeing church age is the condition of Judah in Jerusalem. We're going to find in Isaiah, back to Isaiah, and in Jeremiah, when at the end of Jeremiah, they, they're gone. <clears throat> and listen. This is the condition of Germany. This is the condition of China. This is the condition of, of 
of England. This is the condition of America. Isaiah chapter 1. And if God does not bring the axe upon America and England and China and Russia, he's going to have to apologize to Jerusalem and Judah for all that he will do in Jeremiah and Lamentation. And God is not going to apologize because God is holy and right and they are sinners. So when we pick up the book of Isaiah, we read the book of Isaiah, and the next book, Lord willing, we pick up the book of Jeremiah, we're to look at it as, hate to say it, but current events. When we get to Jeremiah, Lord willing, we get there, we're going to see America. Now, in Jeremiah, we're going to see Judah and Jerusalem fall to Babylon. America will fall one day in her sins, and she's loaded with sins because her churches are loaded with sins, and her churches are defending the country of sins. And we say, God bless America and one nation under God. And I've got to say it's a small G, and which God? I'm not, I said, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting off of what I'm just saying. When you got churches that are celebrating Christmas, and when you look at the factual things of Christmas, it is Tammuz and Baal. Don't you read about Baal in the Bible? Don't you read about Tammuz in the Bible? Don't you read about the women in Jeremiah coming up? They're going to break, they're going to bake cakes to the queen of heaven. Don't you see Asterix in the Bible? And Asterix has an alias named Esther. Easter? And is that not in our churches today? Baptist churches? I ain't talking about the Catholics. I ain't talking about the Lutherans. I ain't talking about the Morons. I ain't talking about the Joe. I'm talking about the Baptist church, the principles of the Baptist church. And there is paganism. You know what? There is paganism in Isaiah. There is paganism in Jerusalem. There is paganism in Judah. And we're going to read about Lord William in Jeremiah chapter 10. We're going to read about the Christmas tree. And I have been in three churches. Where... That's not the Christmas tree. Okay. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to get wood, hay, or stubble. If you're wrong... I'm going to get rewarded, and you're going to get wood, hay, and stubble. I just seen a post today. has non-Christian, worldly, and the documented historic evidence of the Christmas tree is pagan. That was not saved by a Christian. That was not saved by anybody who went to a seminary. That, that was just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a history thing I, have, I get in my Facebook. Friend, the world agrees with me. That's kind of bad when the world agrees with the Bible believer and the Bible believer doesn't believe with the Bible believer. Why should ye be stricken anymore? So they, uh, Israel and, and uh, Judah and Jerusalem, are already being stricken by God. And you're going to get continued to be stricken. Ye will revolt. And that's rebellion. Despise. More and more. And we'll get into that, Lord willing, into Jeremiah. You know, when we get to Isaiah 53, we talk about Jesus Christ. And yet the Jews say Isaiah 53 is them. And the persecutors is the Gentiles. Oh, they're looking forward to Calvary. They can't even read their own scriptures correctly. The whole head is sick. Now, in the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ says God is sick, vomiting. God is saying about Judah and Jerusalem, your head, picture it as a, as a body, your head is sick. That would be Revelation 3, 17 that we read. And a whole heart faint. You got there's a heart condition. There's a fainting. Their heart is not right. Their heart is sick. From the sole of the foot. That's the very bottom. That's what you walk on. 
And we have prophecy of Genesis 3.15 about the soul of the foot and the head of the devil in Jesus Christ. Uh, even to the head. That's Job. Job was smitten by the devil of boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Job pitches 42 chapters, 42 months, the tribulation period. When you read the Old Testament, you're reading prophecy yet to happen. There is no soundness in it. And then when you go back and read Revelation chapter 3, it says you're just sick. Buy some eye slob because your eyes are sick. But wounds and bruises, that's the only time bruises shows up. And purifying, it's, it's gag green, decaying sword. It, it pictures an example of cancer that eats away your body. They have not been closed. There's an open. I just had my my toe removed. And you, if you were to look at my toe on on the Saturday when I went to the emergency room, there was a hole in my foot. It erupted. It looked broke open. And if I would have left my toe like it was, and they told me if I would have waited to Monday to go see my doctor, it would have caused a lot of damage. If I had left my toe like it was, there was there was infection in the bone. It would have traveled through my body. And I had one point in my time that I had such affection that I was actually killing myself, laying in bed, thinking I had the flu. I was dehydrating myself, and my, and my body was just getting infected. They have not been closed. You've got open sores. You've got to close those sores up. But they're not. There's no medical intention. Neither bound up, you know, tape it up, get a band aid. Neither mollified, that is to calm, quiet, soften. Only time that word shows up with ointment. When the first time I went to the doctor with my toe, which, which healed up, he gave me an ointment. He says, put this on your foot. It's an antibiotic ointment. Had I not used that ointment and you know, I don't need ointment, I probably would have been in the hospital a lot sooner. Your country, verse 1, Judah and Jerusalem. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned. Wait till we get to the end of Jeremiah. There is no country. I burned with fire. Your land, Israel, strangers, Gentiles, devour it in your presence. An army occupation. It is desolate as overthrown by strangers, Gentiles. God has sent the Gentiles numbers and numbers and numbers of time to come into Judah and Jerusalem and to Israel to chastise. His people. God has sent not a strange people. He has sent a strange disease. He has sent weather. He sent our own people. Our own people set a fire. The west coast of America. It ain't finished yet because America has not repented yet. We have a worldwide epidemic. We've never had that before. And no one has the answers. Now, everybody thinks it's all going to turn out well and dandy. Yeah, when Jesus Christ comes. The daughter of Zion, that's Jerusalem. That's where David settled. It's Jewish. It's left as a cottage. First time that word shows up in a vineyard. Israel is considered a vineyard. As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, I'd be happy there, as a besieged city. 
So I would assume that this cottage, this lodge, would be something temporal because you're not going to have cucumbers in the winter. You don't have a vineyard in the winter. So I was thinking it's a place that you go and live and dwell while the season is of the grapes and cucumbers. Then left desolate when harvest is over and the weather has come. Not for growing. Except the Lord of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant. And this is quoted in the New Testament. We should have been as Sodom destroyed and we should have been like unto Gomorrah destroyed and yet God will always leave a remnant Israel will be completely destroyed except for a remnant that comes out of the tribulation period Israel would have been destroyed under Adolf Hitler had not God left the remnant where are the Babylonians today they're gone where's the Syrians today they're gone to show that listen one day Americans they'll be gone there won't be no Americans in, in glory there won't be no Americans walking the streets of the street of gold in New Jerusalem there won't be the English walking the street of gold in, no they're gone but there'll be still Jews in the new earth hear the word of the Lord ye rulers of Sodom they're gone Sodom's gone. It's been gone many, many books ago. Sodom was wiped out when, when Lot came out. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. There was no law of God before Sodom and Gomorrah fell. And when they fell, they fell. And yet there is sodomy going on in Jerusalem and Judah. We'll pick it up in Isaiah and we'll pick it up in Jeremiah. There is sodomy going on all over the world today. There's sodomy going on right now in Israel. Right now, the, the, the gay and lesbian people are proudly performing who they are and what they are in God's nation. And if it was a sin during the book of Isaiah, and if it's sin during the, the book of the law, and if it's sin then, it is sin today and God will deal with them. The nation of Israel is living like they're living in the time of Isaiah and Jeremiah right now with, her, with the cities of America, England, China, and all the world. You better be studying Isaiah and Jeremiah in the schools. Oh, the schools are closed. Or were closed. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me. Now watch this. And bring this to the church age. Saith the Lord. I am full of burnt offerings of rams. That was in the law. I am. Th I, and the fat of. And the fat of fed beasts. That was in the law. I did not. I do I delight not in the blood of bullocks. That was in the law. Or the lambs or the he goat. That was in the law. You know what they're doing while they're sinning? They're going to the temple. They are sinning and bringing the sacrifices that the law prescribed. You know what people are going, you know what people are doing in the church? They're going to church Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon they're sinning. Monday morning they're sinning. There are people who go to a church on Sunday morning and they're sinning while they're in, they're in church Sunday morning. And they bring their prayers and they go up to the prayer altar and they sing, sing the hymns and they may make notes and stuff like that and they're sinning. That's what, that's what the lukewarm is. I'd rather you be cold. Don't go to church. If, you don't, if your heart's not in church, don't go. Stay home. Don't give money. If, if you're going to gripe and complain because you've got to put money in that plate, God says, listen, I love a cheerful giver. It's not under the law. If you don't want to give the money, don't go. But if you want to love the Lord and you want to do right and you want to give to the Lord because you love me and you go for it. Be hot. But walk, walking down the middle of the road, 
I guarantee there are people going out drinking on Saturday and going to a Baptist church Sunday morning and go home, open up the refrigerator and have a beer. I guarantee there are people who sit in a Sunday morning, on Sunday morning only, or probably Sunday night goers and maybe midweeks, or, and they, they come home, they get their computer out, and they start looking at pictures they shouldn't be looking at. Or they say and gossip things they shouldn't be saying or do. I know it. I know it. I've been 33 years saved. I know the sins of the churches. And they don't want to do right. They don't want to hear it. And they put me down as wrong. They put me down as a heathen. And they stand up for their things and they quote me as in, you know, that's an oddball. I know. You're not the first and only one. And they're, they're being religious. But their heart's not in it. Their service to God has become a ritual. Sunday morning. Okay, Sunday morning. Got to be in church. All right, see you next Sunday. Oh, it's got to be church Sunday night. Okay, going to be there Sunday night. Got to be there uh, midweek service. Going to be there midweek service. But we, but we don't give God Monday. We don't give him Tuesday. We don't give him Thursday. We don't give him Friday. We sure don't give him Saturday. Listen, I've sat in houses, Christian houses. The Bible stays in the back seat of the car. I know of one house. There are three people in that house. Four television sets and all four television sets are going. I've seen from churches, I've seen cars pull out of the driveway and onto the road and the Bibles go flying off the roof the top of the car. They wouldn't do that with their coffee. I've seen kids go to the basketball field that they had at the church. I've seen the Bibles get skidded across the blacktop and cherish the big orange ball. They're there. They're there because their girlfriend's there and they, they want to please their girlfriend. They're there because mom and dad makes them be there. Sometimes even the, the pastor, or the preacher, or the deacons, or, or whoever in that church of authority, Sunday, they're there because I got, I got an office in this church and I don't dare not go. When you come to appear before me, that's Jerusalem or Judah, that would be the temple. What about the Christian? Who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? That's the temple. Who told you to come? Why are you coming? Well, the preacher had a message. That we ought to be here. When the church doors are open, we ought to be here. How do you feel about it? I don't like it. I don't really want to be here. Then your heart's not in it. And you're not going to find yourself getting a reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, I know I'm 33 years old in the Lord, 52 years old by the birth of my mother. I've known men and Christians, they go out to visitation because the pastor made them do it. You're not getting no rewards. Not when you're made to do it. When Paul says God loves a cheerful giver. Bring no more vain, empty. We read that from the Song of Solomon in Ecclesiastes. Vain, empty. Bring me no more vain ovulation. Uh, let me, let me well, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes. Bring me no more empty ovulations. I've been in churches where, where, where he, the, the person's called on, can you pray for, and you hear their prayer. You, you don't pray. That's probably the last, last time you ever pray is probably when you were called upon by the pastor before to pray. Incense, that was, that was to be brought to the temple, is an abomination to me. The priests are in there doing what the law prescribed. 
And God's like, that's an abomination. Pastor today gets it, works on, work, work, he, he pulls an outline out of the file cabinet. Oops. <laughs> Haven't used this one in a while. Man, that, that's an abomination. When the pastor gets up and entertain the goats and the sheep are starving to death, and he whacks elegant, that's, that's lukewarm. And you're making me sick. My people are starving to death, and you brought in all the ent worldly entertainment to please the goats. And you've got some of them goats thinking they're saved, and they're not sheep, they're still goats. What do you think God thinks about that? That you have deceived somebody thinking that they're saved and they'll end up when they're died, end up in, a, in hell. The new moons, that's the first of the month for the Jewish people, and that was to be a festive time. Well, you know, we got our holy days of the church. Okay. Your new moon and your Sabbath, that is the seventh day. That is the seventh years. That's the rest of the children of Israel prescribed by the law. Holy days of the church. The calling of assembly. Time to be in church Sunday morning. To be in church Sunday evening. Be in the church in midweek service. You know, I'm spiritually applying to the church, but this is also going on in Isaiah, in the time of Isaiah. I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Do you realize your church service, your church, your attitude, church, church, your sacrifice, uh, what uh, your heart and your sacrifice to God may be an abomination. God's like, I don't want it. And, and, you know, we're great. We're wonderful. How great we are. God says, you're miserable. You're poor. You're wretched. You're naked. You're blind. Isaiah 1, Revelation 3. Don't you call me. I'm wrong. You get down and repent. If you're angry with me because I, I've stepped on your toes. You're taking out. Yeah, I'm taking out of context. Like what a lot of churches are doing today. We got VBS, Vacation Bible. All right. One hour VBS. Five minutes. Round everybody up attendance. Ten minutes of craft. Five minutes of Bible study. Eleven minutes for food. Eight minutes for contesting games. Two minutes of reading another book. Four minutes to go out in a playground or some kind of entertainment, and then two minutes to round them up and 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 have a, you know attendance and send them home. You only had five minutes. That ain't vacation Bible. That's V E S. What's V E S? Vacation education. I mean, veg yeah, vacation entertainment. That's what that is. Now, you don't like what I'm saying? That's absolutely tough. I got kicked out of the church because because of decoration of VBS. That's why I was kicked out of the church. If you don't like my decorations, you assaulted my wife. Don't come back. Two weeks later, oh, here's a list of things we don't like about you. Yeah. Okay. God knows. I am weary to bear them. You realize you and your attitude going to church makes God weary. In a weary land. In a weary land. Yeah, it may be your church service. It may be your church. And when you spread forth prayers, that's prayer. Spreading forth your hands, that's prayer. I know the Pentecostals do it, but that's God, fill my hands. When we lift up prayers, when we spread forth our hands, I will hide my eyes from you. What do you think it is that the fact is that in the world today, in the world, many of the churches have been closed by God through COVID-19? How 
How many of you think those Christians have who have had their churches closed are actually praying at home, reading their Bible at home? And, and the, some of the past, oh, they're, they're watching us on Facebook. Yeah, I, I really think the other day, they're not watching their church on Facebook. They're watching, they're watching another church on Facebook. <laughs> Or they love Facebook to the fact is, all right, I don't like the part you're saying. Click. <laughs> Find another church or watch a movie. Sid pastors out there think they're so great and wonderful and their messages are. Yeah. I got I there's one preacher I used to sit under. I used to I used to describe him as a saltine cracker in the desert. Dry. <laughs> Don't tell me I've been in plenty of churches. I've been saved for 33 years. I will hide my eyes from you. Yay! That's what the devil said. Yay! Yay! When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Imagine God telling you that. Imagine a holy, righteous God that wants you to pray. Say, when you make me sick walking down the middle of the road, lukewarm, I'm not listening to you. And that's the state of the Laodicean church age today, my friend. And there'll be people going to hear, that, oh, you're out of context. No, yeah. You know why you're trying to say I'm out of context? Because your life is out of context and you want to be given an excuse. You want God to give you a permission slip to go ahead and sin and do whatever you want to do. In the name of Jesus, of course. Your hands are full of blood, murder. And when we're talking about Jerusalem and Judah, they are killing prophets. They are killing people. They are killing the, the, the fatherless. They are killing the widows. They are murderers. And the law, the law in Isaiah says, thou shalt not kill. And they're still going to temple. Joab murders two men, not in wartime, open murders two men, and when he's caught, where does he run to? He runs to the horns of the altar. Check that out. He's an open murderer. And then he runs to the temple for mercy and grace. And Solomon tells his servant, Benaka or something like that, kill him right there. Kill him right there. And when I can apply spiritually, spiritually to the church and Isaiah and Jeremiah, Lord willing, I'm going to apply it. But this is the state and the condition of Jerusalem and Judah, and it matches China, Russia, Germany, England, and America. And if God does not bring the judgment upon those Gentile nations, he's going to have to apologize to Nineveh. He's going to have to apologize to, ben, uh, to uh, Babylon. He's going to have to apologize to Sodom. He's going to have to apologize to Gomorrah. He's going to have to apologize to uh, uh, Bethsaida. He's going to have to apologize to the cities he mentioned when Jesus Christ walked on this earth. I, I'm trying to think of some of the names, but I can't. But Jesus said, woe unto, and he gets a couple of cities. I can't remember their names. And Americans are so egotistic and so prideful and proud to be American. They think they're going to go on forever. I read a post the other day. This is not my nation I grew up with, expecting that this nation is supposed to go on as she does forever and ever, forevermore. What happened to Jesus Christ coming in the millennia and reigning without the curse? Well, you know, we want America and we want, I know I got to get off of that, but that's where we are today. As we go into Isaiah and we get into Jeremiah, we're going to see Jerusalem and Judah in their sins and going to temple. And they're going to think that God is so pleased with us. And we've already seen God says, that's vain. That's wicked. That's, that's you know, look, look what it says in verse 13. And we'll be done. Bring no more vain oblation. Incense is ab abomination. That's what God told them to do in the law. They are obeying the law. But they're not doing it with a good heart. 
And when a preacher gets up and the law says we have to tithe, and they're giving because the preacher is free, you have to give by your tithe, ignoring what Paul says, a cheerful giver. Go ahead. Give under the force of the preaching of tithes in the law. And God, my computer just went off. Something. And God is not going to reward that if you're forcefully doing it. God's going to, you wanted to give it. You didn't have to give it. And if you had to give an offering to pay a bill, which I've had to do, medical bills. Listen, you pray to me. You say, God, I really want to give it to you, but I have a medical bill. See, that's not the preaching you find in the churches today because they lack faith in God. <laughs> you know. So Isaiah and Jeremiah, Lord willing, we're going to get into some great, gooey, great chocolatey chip fresh out of the oven, makes your mouth water yummy. This is some great, but you know what? When God's already started out in verse 15, he says, you're doing right. You're doing what I told you to do, but it's an abomination. And then what we read about the Laodicean church age, what God says about them. Israel thought they were doing great. Judah thought they were doing great. Jerusalem thought they were doing great. The church thinks it's doing great, and the axe is going to fall in Jeremiah. The axe is going to fall for the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. One day, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come. We're going to be raptured out of here. And then we're going to face the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. And too many Christians in this period, of all periods, but, but this period, the land, they're going to, there may be people not even going to be at the great white throne. I mean, they're going to be Christian. They're going to be people not at the judgment seat of Christ because they thought they were saved and they weren't saved and ended up at the great white throne judgment. That's even worse. And the church led them to think they were saved and they weren't saved. I think some churches today in the world, well, God says our prayer. No, I think the devil's doing it. I don't know.